the copy that would be, that, that'd be okay wonderful. yeah, yeah that watch out. it's recording so don't say anything bad about anybody so All right. <laughs> um and so I went ahead and I made a list of some of the questions that you asked and um, I'll address some of those right away just so I don't miss any of them and then if you think of more um, you can just you know just tell me and I'll also show you uh, some of my favorite like free or basically free tools that I use all the time when I'm managing social media for my clients. Um, I own a company called Social Impressions. So we've, we've run social media for the main office of tourism, uh, for the Portland Jet Port in South Portland, um, and then a bunch of other major national and international brands. And then every once in a while, some smaller companies too, like Havens Candies and Wyndham Weaponry and other places like that. And so, um, but we've been in this in this world, believe it or not, since 2008, which in social media terms makes me an old fart. Like I am, uh, I, I should be covered with gray hair and halfway up to my neck with dirt at this point, because usually people burn out at this point with it. But uh, <laughs> but here I am still burning the midnight oil. So. <laughs> so you've seen a lot of changes, right? I mean, you've, you've had oh, to yeah. It's yeah. especially in the past few years, uh, the only thing that I always tell my clients that they can count on is that whatever I tell you right now will change in the next 90 days. Um, because that's just the nature of social media. And with all of the scrutiny that's happening now because of politics and, um, and just how easy it is to influence people online with, with all kinds of different types of information, uh, social networks are really trying to crack down more which is great, but for some businesses, it's not so great because it, uh, you know, it really restricts on the types of advertising we can do, how zeroed in we could get. Uh, my favorite story about social media is actually about my wife. Um, I met my wife 13 years ago, uh, mm -hmm. and then we got married six months after meeting. And for our one year anniversary, I wanted to do something really special for her. And I was trying to think of something that I could do. And so, um, Facebook had just started Facebook advertising back then. And I was like, man, I think I should, I should do it on Facebook. And so I went on Facebook and I took out an ad. And back then we could target people like extremely, extremely narrow targeting, um, very specific, very personal, like stuff that you can't do anymore because it's restricted, but back then you could. And so I went on, uh, on Facebook and I took out an ad uh, and I said, I want to target this white, this, this ad to women who work in Scarborough, Maine, who have a degree in veterinary technology, who are 24 years old, who have blonde hair and were recently <laughs> And I served this ad to my wife for one entire day that said, happy anniversary, Aaron, I love you. And I had a little picture from our wedding and it showed up on her Facebook newsfeed. All the, every single time she logged in was an ad from me. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. And so, yeah, so back in the day, that's how specific you could get. You can still, with some of the new technology, you can still get really specific. It's just not as easy. Um, and with the, with the changes at regulations, which I think are are really important that are happening, um, you know, it's 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 a good thing all these changes that are happening because um, I think the power that these these guys have is, even though it benefits my business, it is pretty scary <laughs> how much we know about about people, whether, whether they want to believe that we know it or not. And so, um, but so I wanted to, what a couple of the questions that I had, I have on my, my screen here um, is of course, one of the things I'll address once I share my screen is about um, how to get more views on your stuff, which is always a question uh, on all the social networks. One of the challenges is, uh, is what's called organic reach. Organic reach basically means that's a post that you put up on your Facebook business page that you're not paying any additional money for someone to see. And so you're kind of relying on those loyal fans who see your content and kind of hoping that I'm going to post this up and it's going to be about, you know, Stephen King's new book and hopefully all my fans see it. And 10 years ago, there was a high likelihood that 75% of your fans would see whatever you posted on Facebook because there was so much less noise nowadays on Facebook, when a business posts to the Facebook page, a decent, what we refer to as reach, which means the amount of people seeing your posts organically, a decent organic reach now is around 3%, believe it or not. And so, so if you have a thousand oh, wow. fans and you post organically and you haven't paid to boost it and you're not doing anything special to make sure that post has a better chance at reaching more people, 
on average, you'll be three to 5% for, po for pages that are really popular, like get lots of organic traffic, like, you know, Buzzfeed or, um, you know, the news sites or celebrities, you know, they, they likely are getting much higher interaction because of who they are but the average business isn't a celebrity and the average business doesn't have $20,000 a month to spend on Facebook ads and all this craziness. Um, and so I tell you that so that you don't feel bad if you feel like you're not reaching a huge amount of people. That is, that's the way social networks build their business. Like, you know, they, they get millions of people to join and use it for free. And then they launch a business model, like what TikTok is doing right now. They're, they're now launching ads for, on TikTok. The reason they do this is to say, hey, look, let's get all these people virtually addicted to this online community. Now let's launch a business model where we can say, hey, business owners, hop on here and reach all these fans who want to know about your ice cream or your library or your bookstore. And then they let you do that for a little while. And you're like, wow, this is great. I can't believe I'm reaching this many people for free. And then they say, oh, by the way, now we're announcing advertising. And with that, we're going to restrict your organic reach so that instead of you being able to reach most of your fans, now you reach way, way, way less. And so, um, and that's how they make their money because now businesses have to pay to reach those people in general, if they want to have a better chance of, uh, getting their messaging seen. The nice part, how do they restrict your organic reach though? They have a way to go in and do that. Yeah. So it's based on a number of things. Um, Facebook has this thing called edge rank, which is basically just their algorithm that determines who sees what those determining factors, are based on our number of things, but one of which is how often people interact with your posts. And okay. so if you don't get um, very much engagement in the form of likes or comments or shares, then your organic reach will begin to diminish because I Facebook see. says, oh, well, people don't care about what they're posting because they're not interacting with it. And so yeah. they begin to, to diminish that reach. Other things that will affect it is just the amount of competition that might be happening in the season. We're coming up to a season right now where Facebook ad costs are going to increase because every politician is going to be spending millions of dollars on ads in a couple of weeks. Um, on top of that, open enrollment for the Affordable Care Act will start. That will increase ad prices because there's going to be every insurance agent is going to want you to sign up for Obamacare through or Trump Care, whatever they're calling it now, through them. And so there's a lot of things and we're all fighting for that you know, that two inch square on someone's mobile device uh, for them okay. to see our posts. The nice thing is, is that they do tell us some guidelines that constantly change, um, but they remain the same for a little while. And so some of the things you can do um, to increase your organic reach without having to start, you know, regular or raising funds for some sort of social media advertising budget um, is Facebook uh, basically never likes to see a post that's just text. So they don't ever want to see, um, you know, a post like, Hey, we're, uh, you know, happy July 4th, you know, and it's, and it's just text, no image, no video, um, no, no, sh sh you know, article share attached to or something. The reason they don't is because Facebook says that they want Facebook to always be a visually appealing and affirming place. And so to them, a text only post, boring you know like it's it's just a, a boring post that that less people are gonna see um right and so one of my first piece of advice for everybody is whenever you do any type of post especially on facebook be sure to attach either an image or a video um because it's going to automatically increase your reach they put some restrictions on the type of what about, image um that thing where you um you can make your your text post just uh fancy text on a fancy background yeah so it's kind of like an emoji or a gif type of thing yeah, yeah. so so those will work well um i think the you'll still find a better reach if you if you do it the post with an image versus those uh, like text emoji deals um yeah. but i think when used sparingly you know they're fun to experiment with um yeah. I think the challenge is sometimes people rely on those you know, too often and then, you know, the, the engagement doesn't happen and then you're fighting to get your, your rank back with them. Um, and the, they put some restrictions on the type of images you can share on Facebook. So there's images you can share where you're likely to get a larger organic reach. And then there's things you can do that Facebook doesn't even tell you are going to negatively affect you. Um, 
that can reduce your chances of your post being seen. So for instance, um, in many cases, an image that's more than about 30% text is going to get a lot less reach than an image with less text and more image. Their justification of that is because they see it as if you're sharing an image that is all text, you know, it's a, a, a it's a picture of a book cover, for instance, right? Which would make sense for a library to share. Um, but if it's, it's a picture of a book cover and, it, and that's all it is and it's all text, Facebook's robots see that as a coupon. And so um, Facebook's robots are saying, hey, if you want to put a coupon on Facebook, then you're going to pay. You're going to pay for more people to see this because you're trying to sell something. And so ways around that is using a tool where that image that has so much text in it is just one part of your image. If you think of it, of breaking up your image into multiple squares, into about six squares, and then say, okay, well, I know I don't wanna have more than three, maybe three and a half of these squares filled with text, or else I'm gonna get a, a lesser reach. You can't always avoid it, because there's gonna be times when you're posting it, you know, a you know, pizza shop wants to post their open sign, or, um, you know, there's, there's things that you can't, movies have to promote movie trailers and movie photos. And so, um, but in general, the less text, the better. And so um, lots of times what I do is use a tool called Canva. Have you, have you guys ever heard of that before? No. Okay, cool. I, I, I think Caroline has, and then the other, so I'm gonna share my screen with you. Just Canva is a free tool. And it's really, really easy to use. And it's exactly why I love it. I'm gonna share my screen with you real quick. Um, there we go, share. You're probably seeing a Christmas Facebook page right now, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll get back to that in a second. So um, Canva is a free tool. Uh, that's C-A-N-V-A dot com. And oh, okay, never mind, sorry. Okay, yeah, and this tool will allow you to go in and say, hey, you know what, I know I wanna make a Facebook post, but I don't know what size that image should be, or I don't, and so Canva has all these templates already created where you can scroll through and say, I wanna do a Facebook post, I wanna do an Instagram post, you know, I wanna do a, you know, a, a printed poster, because you can actually print through here, YouTube channel, all kinds of cool things, um, and it's all free, and if you click and say, okay, we wanna do a Facebook post, once you click it, it opens up a template where you now have a perfectly sized image for Facebook. Then they have a bunch of free templates over here you can actually adjust and use on your own. And so if you wanted to do a Halloween post, you could click it and it'll automatically populate it for you. And then you can go in here and all of this is customizable. So you could say, you know, from the library, you know, and then you'd have, a great looking Halloween post right from the library. You can say, okay, well, you know, um, I don't like this black square. So you can click it and you can say, well, we want that square to be, you know, red. And now the square around the image is red. And so um, it's a very, very easy tool to use and it's totally free. Um, the only time it costs money is when you start adding premium images, but they have thousands of free images. And so for instance, if we go in, let me clear this. You're not gonna let me, I'll just, I'll just open a new one. Leave. So if we went in and say, um, you know, we wanted to do a summer post about, you know, all the people who ruined my favorite river to float in because they left all their beer bottles behind. Um, we could say we want a photo of, uh, you know, I don't know why we do beer, let's say soda cans. And now it's gonna bring up all these stock images. Anything that has free underneath it means it's a free image you can use without paying any royalties. That's really great. Yeah, and so then you can click it and you can size it the way you want it. If wow. you want to add text, cause there's this you know, white space up here, yeah. then we can just go over and click text. And then you could add in big text, small text, tiny text. They even have text formats you could add in. But if we could say, you know, uh, picnic lunch, enter, and then we could drag it up here in the screen. We could then say, oh, we want that, you know, smaller. We want to change the color of it. And 
so you can just click around and add drag and drop do all kinds of really awesome things with this tool and it's completely free um and so it's a fantastic tool they have great all kinds of templates you can use and so if you go up to the template window you can search the template so if it's you know uh, fall is coming up so you can type in fall and it has all these autumn photos and fall photos already for you so if you know say you had a great quote by you know Ralph Waldo Emerson you can say okay well this looks like a great quote photo so let's just change this quote to whatever I want it to say nice wow and then put it in here and then put Hollis library at the bottom you know and it's just like it's just such a great way to create really beautiful looking posts that three years ago you would have been paying a graphic designer $125 an hour to do. Um, and now you can do for free and they even have a mobile app. So you can download the Canva app onto your smart device and you can do these when you're you know, waiting in line at Hannaford. And so um, they're great. You can also upload, you can upload your own images. And so for instance, for a lot of my clients, I have, um, you know, like I have a, a client of mine named Tony Pace, who's a big Las Vegas or back when live events happened, he was a big Las Vegas entertainer. And so you can upload your own images. And so like, you know, here's a picture of Tony singing. And so if we wanted to do a promotional post for him, he took this photo from one of his shows, I can upload it in, I could change the background just by clicking, say, oh, I want the background to be blue. And then I can say, oh, I want to add text. So we're going to, you know, I like how this looks, post this in here, and then I'm going to edit it, Tony Pace. And so it's a, such a neat tool, and it allows you to create great looking images um, that meet a lot of those qualifications that Facebook wants to see as far as colorful, great, but not too much text. Um, and there's just so many options for different uh, font options for different templates. You can add in, you know, cool looking things like this to catch people's eyes. You know, like there's just tons and tons and tons of options. They even have a free video. So you can go in and type in, I don't know what they have for library. Let's see. So these look like most of these are paid when they have the crown. It means you're going to pay for them, which is going to be like $4 for a video and $1 for an image, which is still way cheaper than what you'd pay from any video place but with the videos what's neat is you can take them and you can still size them and you can still add your text over the top of them and so you can still superimpose text on these so that you know it still looks like a nice marketing piece um and so it, it allows you all this customization so that you can do what you want to create really fantastic looking posts. And many of these, once you've downloaded it, you can go ahead and upload it right to Instagram also. And so it's a, you know, it's like a one-stop shop for um, really doing all the image work you need to do. It's, I always tell people it's Photoshop for dummies um, because like it allows you to do so many great things to make you stand out compared to you know, like Googling for clip art or something. Um, and images can be so expensive if you go the traditional route of buying stock photos and that type of thing. Dave, so I have a question. Want... When, oh, oh. When, we post, when we post to Instagram, should we um, set it so it automatically goes to our Facebook page? I have that question. And another question I have is, should we post um, daily only once a day? How, what's your thoughts? Yeah. So, um, I'm not a huge fan of letting things automatically share over to Facebook. Okay. Many, many times the resolution is off or the sizing isn't quite right. Um, and so it can create some challenges. If you are going to um, do things where what they, it's called cross posting, um, okay. Facebook actually just launched a tool um, that's free that allows you to cross post from in, from Facebook to Instagram and know that it's going to size correctly. Okay. And I'll, I'll actually show it to you now. Um, and you have access to it. You probably just haven't seen it yet. It's called, um, you have to go through your publishing tool. So if this was your Facebook yeah. page, we'll make believe. Um, and then across the top, you have this white bar um, that you've probably seen before. And in here, you can access all kinds of things 
Um, but if you click the more button and then publishing tools, and then across the top, it says creator studio. This is, this is new. So you probably haven't seen this yet and click try now. And Creator Studio, what's great about this is A, it allows you to schedule posts to go out on Facebook. So if you didn't have to think about it the day of, you could schedule your entire month in here all at once and then never think about Facebook for the rest of the month, except for when you're answering people's questions. Um, and what's also nice is they just launched Instagram capability because Facebook owns Instagram. And so what you would do is say, okay, I want to create a post. And it's going to open up the normal window that you're used to seeing. Let me move my video here. And over here, so we say, okay, I want to share, uh, you know, a photo. This is my, my client's image of some guy who's interviewing on the radio. And say, yo, I'm happy to be here. Whatever you want to say. And then you're going to have the option down here. You have all these options of you could make it add in video, you know, all the things that you're used to seeing and you can schedule this to go out. And so you can say, I want to go have it go out now, or you can click schedule and you can say, no, I know, you know, this post is for, you know, the week of Christmas when no one's working, but we want to have posts going out. Then you could say, I want to schedule this for, you know, December 23rd at 1113 AM. And then you click schedule. And now Facebook is going to post that on December 23rd at 11, 13 AM. And you can go in and view it. So if you ever want to see what you have scheduled, you just go over here and you'll see the scheduled posts. And so you can go in here now and see all these posts that you have scheduled um, for when they want to go out. If you want to post to Instagram from here, which is a new option, we used to only be able to post to Instagram through your phone um, is up top. You have the little Facebook. And then next to it's the Instagram logo. Okay. Just click that. And it's going to ask you to connect your, your Instagram page, which will just require your login information. And then do, do, from here, we just do the same thing for posting. We would create a post. You would tell them where you want it to go. So Instagram feed is if it's a image or a video that's less than a minute. If it's more than a minute, because it's a video, then you click IGTV, which stands for Instagram TV, um, which is where you can post videos that are up to, I believe, 40 minutes long. And so, but if we said, no, we want this to go to the Instagram feed, it's going to open up the same window. We would type in our caption. We could add a location. And I always encourage people to add a location to your Instagram post, whether you're doing it through here or on your mobile device. The reason for that is because on Instagram, one of the ways your content is found is because Instagram has a really popular search tool where people look at photo, photos based on where they're posted from. So hey, they can I go just add, say, oh, what was that? I have, I have a question about that. When I post on Instagram, um, if I let it just go to default, it says, I think it says Hollis Center, Maine, mm -hmm. uh, that hashtag. If you go look at that hashtag, it's, um, I, I can't remember now even what's on there. Not very many photos, but it's not a place I want people to associate with a library, not the town, but just the images that are there. So right. I always go in and either put Little Falls Road or just put Hollis, Maine, leave the center out. Yep. I, I don't know what else to do about that. Yeah, you can do, do that. Or you could even put in the library. They should have the library name in there someplace if you search for it. Um, and so I, Typically what I do, especially if it's kind of a small, a small town where like Hollis is small enough, Hollis center is really, <laughs> you know, like really zeroing in. Um, and so I, I don't blame you as far as I would probably choose um, whatever one has the most activity happening. Cause that's the more likelihood of people finding it organically. Right. Um, right. And so you could put that in there. Um, Oh, here we go. Hollis Center Public Library. Um, but we said you could say Hollis, Maine, or whatever you want to say. Then you just click Add Content. And if you're uploading an image, here's his here's his image. If you want to tag someone, meaning oh, I know that guy, then you could just click the little tag button here. And then if you want this to go to your Facebook, also, then you'd click Post to Facebook and just check off your Facebook page here. And then you can either click Publish. 
or you can schedule it, or you can save it as a draft. So if you had someone, say you had an intern who was an in, a young a young person who's like, oh, I rock on Instagram. Can I run your Instagram as a, an example for six months? And you're like, yeah, but I don't want you posting photos that don't you know align with our brand. Then you could just have them post everything as a draft. And then yeah. later you can go in and look at the drafts and approve them and schedule them. And that way they don't just have free reign of speaking for your company, which lots of times that can get, you know, sometimes yeah, that can get, problems. Problems. Yeah. Yeah. get murky. <laughs> so, um, so it's pretty neat. It's a great tool. And face, like I said, Facebook just launched this um, and it's on everybody's page. Again, the way to get to it is you just go to your Facebook page and you'll just click more and then publishing tools. And then you'll have this button up here that says creator studio. And then you just click that and that'll open up all those. That'll open up this page where you have all these options. So, so it's a great tool and that combined with Canva allows you to create great images and then also schedule images and videos so that you don't have to be trying to think of it you know, in the moment, um, which always raises the question, well, what type of content should I be sharing um, you know, in order to remain relevant and get people interacting? Facebook says that what they want to see people doing is sharing content that creates ongoing conversation. And so you know, that isn't the easiest thing to do all the time, as everybody knows if you've ever tried to get interaction on Facebook. But lots of times it can be done with, um, you know, posts that ask a question. Maybe it's an image of Stephen King and, you know, what was the first Stephen King book you ever read? Uh, who's your favorite main author? Um, you know, what's, what's your favorite genre of book? Things where you can ask questions where they're kind of open-ended. Lots of times I have great luck with fill in the blank type questions where it's like the start of my post is fill in the blank. My favorite author is you know, and then I just put a blank line and then people just, you know, list the names, um, you know, or, or it might be, you know, uh, you know, how many books are in the Hollis library? You know, here's a hint between zero and, you know, 6,000 or whatever, um, you know, guess it right and stop by the library and get a free whoopie pie or whatever, you know, and so um, qu questions that pose some sort of, you know, answer that's really easy um, because the key with social media is people don't like to think. And that's why misinformation is shared so easily. Um, it's because people are sitting here, they're on their mobile device 80% of the time. And so they're sitting there at a red light, you know, or they're sitting there at school or wherever they are, and they don't want to have to think. And so if we ask them a question like, um, you know, who was your favorite main author from the time period of 1910 to 1962, they're gonna have to think too hard. You know, like, I'm not I'm not thinking like you're not paying me to think and so um but if it's an easy question then people are much more apt to take part and even sometimes if people are being you know if they're joking around or what even that helps because the more questions and comments that you get on your post the more people that post is going to reach organically um and so many times i try to think of like okay well what's a question we can ask this week or or two or three questions i can you know ask throughout the week that might spur some engagement. I don't make every post a question or a fill in the blank, um, but it's one of many where it's like, okay, I know this lots of times will, you know, get some engagement. Um, yeah. and, and what I try to do is when I'm doing that type of post where I know it's kind of a, um, oops, sorry, it's got to pop up, um, where I, when I'm doing that type of post where I know it's kind of a, you know, what we might call a clickbait type of post where we know we're going to get engagement. What I'll do to get value out of it is two things. One is I'm going to ask this easy question. What's your favorite Stephen, Stephen King book? But then underneath that question, I'm going to put something of valuable information of like, just a reminder, the Hollis library is open Monday through Friday, blah, 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 blah. And so even though they're answering this question, subconsciously, they're also seeing the hours of the library. So it's not just a throwaway post of like, hey, here's a photo of a cute dog floating down the Saco River. Like, yeah, that would probably be a really cute post. But to that, I'm going to add something that I get some ROI on, which might be just reminding them that we're open, that we're here, that we have, um, you know, drop off and pick up. 
um, something where I can sneak it in there. The other thing I'll do is as you discover what posts really inspire people to comment and the types of things that make them talk is when I do a post like that of, um, you know, like this post, if you, you know, like to breathe and you know, everybody's going to like it, you know, or if you like this post, if you, um, you know, if you love Shel Silverstein, uh, then you know, okay, well, we know we're going to get a bunch of engagement on this post, which means that my organic reach for my next post is actually going to be higher now because I've kind of manipulated the algorithm. So on my next post, it's going to be a straight up offer or it's going to be a pitch or it's going to be something of valuable information because I know that post is going to reach more people because the silly post I did yesterday of like a cute dog cartoon or a joke or something that's not even book related, that's just purely for engagement. Well, that earned me the right to do this other post that more people are going to see because so many commented on the last one. And so I try to be really strategic with the posts I do um, that are kind of silly throwaway because I know the next one after that is going to capitalize on the gains that that made me for reaching more people organically. That's a great idea. Yeah, and it'll work really well. Um, I do, a, you know, we do it for all of our clients where we're trying to think of content, um, you know, and ways to, you know, get people more involved with our pages. And so, and it, it's a great way to, you know, get people more involved. And so whether it's a, I, was, I know one of you asked about, you know, um, you know, if it's okay to share, you know, jokes or memes or um, things that may not even be connected to your brand. Um, I think, that's okay. I, mean, I don't do it all the time, but for instance, you know, I've managed the social media for this national um, insurance company. And one of our tactics is like every two weeks we share a meme just because we know it's funny and people are going to interact with it. It shows a little bit of personality. Um, it gets more people connected with what we're doing. And if it's reaching more people and if it's not offensive, then, then why not? Um, because it, ultimately more interaction is better. Um, and so I don't really shy away from if it's a, you know, a video that's going viral on Facebook and it's, you know, dogs jumping over a, a fence or, or, you know, I saw one video once that we did for the insurance company. It was a viral video of a cow jumping over a fence. And it was like the stupidest thing, but it was like hundreds of cows jumping over this fence and this farmer, like trying to stop them from doing nothing to do with insurance at all but we shared the video and as the caption um you know we just put something silly like uh you know getting insurance with true coverage is way easier than you know jumping over a fence you know, or something like that just something slightly related but we knew the yeah. video was going to get a huge organic response and that's why we shared it and so um so i don't shy away the only things that i shy away from when it comes um to sharing on social media for brands um, and companies, if they're not just, you know, celebrities or figures, is I don't post anything that has to do with politics, religion, right. um, you know, like all the basics, the things you don't talk about at Thanksgiving, you know, all those things. Um, I just completely stay away from. Uh, when I'm thinking about content that I share and the way that I guide the people that I work with is I'm always thinking of what's the worst thing that could happen. So if I share this like, you know, hilarious photo of this old lady slipping on the ice and sliding down the hill. Yeah, that's really funny to a young audience, but to a community library, that might be offensive to a huge amount of people who visit your library because the library is such a great resource for senior citizens. And so, yeah, that video is really funny, but it's not going to be funny to 10% of my audience. So it's probably not worth, let's go with the dog one instead. You know, yeah, like that's okay. definitely not going to offend anybody. Yeah. Um, and so I try to guide my choices when it comes to unrelated content, uh, based off of what's the worst way this could be interpreted. Um, because people, you know, nothing will get you more pressed than, than something negative. And so, um, and so I try to just, you know, veer on the side of caution and have fun with, with fun, have fun with the posts and show lots of personality. Um, but also be very aware of how, um, how easy it is for someone to get triggered online and then also for them to provide a 600 word dissertation as to why it triggered them. Uh, and so I just try to avoid those types of, you know, those types of topics. Um, in some cases it may play to your benefit, especially if it's a new, you know, like uh, what is it? Trump's niece's book that just came out. Yeah. 
boy, yeah. you know, putting that up, you know, Hey, we just got this copy of the book. How many of you would like to read this? Yeah. You imagine the con like, and my rule of thumb is you can say anything you want on my client's page, unless you swear or use racist terminology, then have at it. And the reason I do that is because when, when Billy Bob gets on there, you know, and he's writing to me from his tent in the Northern Maine woods where he's making mail bombs. Um, he leaves his big dissertation about why he loves or hates Trump. That's engagement. And so like, that's me. And then when, then when my father-in-law who like would get Donald Trump's face tattooed on his cheek, you know, when he gets on there and says, well, I support Trump and I'll never read this book because of this and this, as long as they're not attacking each other, well, this is conversation and that's exactly what Facebook wants to see. And so for like our insurance client, we just did a post recently that went viral where we said, um, Donald Trump has recently discussed canceling the Affordable Care Act. Do you think the Affordable Care Act should be canceled? Well, you can imagine that's such a left right issue. We got right. thousands of comments and then post just reached thousands and thousands of people. Um, and we just kind of left it, left it there. We let people have their little, you know, respectful arguments. But if someone was dropping F bombs or calling each other names or, you know, everybody jumps to all kinds of different, you know, sweeping statements and adjectives, um, then we would delete those, those comments. Uh, but we kind of just, just let it rip. One, we did another post where, uh, we had an article, I think it was from NPR and it was about defunding the police. And now we're an insurance company. We have nothing to do with defunding the police, but insurance is roughly related to public health. And so we said, there's been a lot of talk lately about defunding the police. How do you feel about this concept? And so we left it. We didn't make any statement of we need to do this or we need to increase this, but we just left it out there for them to fill in whatever their passion is. Um, and so there's ways you can use those sensitive topics to spur engagement as long as uh, you don't take any side of it and you have someone who's there to, you know, take a peek. Like you look at how great the Bangor police department does with their Facebook page. And they sometimes talk about controversial things or they make fun of some idiot or drug addict or whatever. Um, but they do it in a really cute way where they're not taking a side. They're not, you know, you know, and they do a really fun, like narrative first person voice. Um, and they get, and they get, you know, now they're known internationally as an example of fantastic social media work. So, um, so I look for those opportunities where, where it makes sense. I say, okay, yeah, this is something that um, might spur some engagement, you know, and um, without, you know, crossing the line of like, well, what do you think is better, you know, being a Christian or being a Satanist, you know, like I'd avoid that type of stuff. Um, right. But, uh, you know, but some of the topics that are out there that people are really passionate about, um, just invite engagement that that can be really good uh good for the page and could relate if it's a new book that just came out you know is there may be books that inspire that type of you know engagement right so. um dave what about um so if we um we post uh if we wanted to go on the community page as the hollow center library is there can we do that we thought we weren't able to do that the community, is that a Facebook community page? Like a, yes. a group? Yeah, yeah, the Hollis community page is the Facebook page. It was created, I don't know when, maybe in the last year, I'm not sure. Okay, let me look at it. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's that group at the top. This one right here? The communication one? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm a member of this. Um, yeah. I don't think you can post in here as a business. Okay. So um, what we've been doing is posting on our page and then um, usually Heidi shares that to this page. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can do the reason they that Facebook doesn't allow businesses to comment in groups outside of their own is because you could imagine, you know, what Barnes and Noble would be doing to a book club group, you know, if, if they could go in and comment and offer their coupon and you know, turn it into a sales pitch. You can create your own groups. Um, which sometimes is valuable. Sometimes it's just more work and it's just not yeah. worth it. Um, yeah. But for instance, like I run this page here. Uh, I'm a Christmas like fanatic. I've been my whole life. And so I started this, this page called um, I Love Christmas. It's facebook.com slash most wonderful time of the year. It supports our website. 
where we do um, breaking Christmas news 24 seven. And so people can go to our, our website um, and they can, you know, read Christmas news and events and all these things. And so, but within my Facebook page, I went ahead and created a group and these are like the most passionate Christmas people. You know, we have 440 members of people sharing their, you know, Christmas recipes. And so you may find a time where there's like, um, maybe there's a huge sector of the library members who are like romance novel fans or biography fans. Maybe at some point, like, hey, we could create a Hollis Library uh, non-fiction uh, non book club or something. And those groups work great for that. The challenge is everything you create requires more time, more effort, more work. Um, and things can quickly go from being fun to being another headache that you're trying to like, yeah. now you have one page that's busy, the other page isn't busy. And, and lots of times uh, you're just better off, you know, taking care of the big things, you know, until you have time for the, for the much, much smaller. Right, because we're such a small group and we're volunteers except for Caroline. I think what, um, what got me thinking that way was um, on the Hollis community page, the library, uh, there were some untruths put on there by the um, selectmen Mm -hmm. And uh, that just painted us in a totally different way. We had an interaction with them and they gave their version. And so there, um, there was no way to go on and respond as the um, Hollis Center Library. So I just, as myself, went in and, you know, um, put out some facts and some things like that. So, um, so I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I guess that's just as good. Maybe it looks, yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't trying to hide that I was a trustee, but right. You know, I just put it on as a taxpayer. So yeah. and other, other things um, you can do that'll help you also with getting a larger organic reach is, I don't know if you, if you've experienced experimented at all with Facebook live or Instagram live yet. Um, but on your I, mobile device, you can go live on your on your cell phone or you can go live um, from the page uh, if you have a, you know, a camera set up and all that. Facebook Live is exactly that. It's a live broadcast that comes from your phone. I'll send you an article I wrote about it with all kinds of tips and all this stuff. Oh, nice. Um, but I see a lot of, I've seen several libraries that are using it now as um, an opportunity to where I know the Wyndham Library, I believe does a weekly children's book reading where they have one of their librarians reading a picture book uh, to Facebook Live. And so people can watch it live or watch it later. Um, and so other people I've seen, they'll do it as a, you know, as a reveal or as a book review. And so um, Facebook loves live video. And so if you have someone who's comfortable being on, you know, in front of the camera, it's a, a great, tool that's free that can also help you get more engagement uh, and reach more people. And so some of the best ways to use Facebook Live that I don't see many people doing is collaborating with something else from the community. So if there's another business that supports the library, for instance, or that is just a good community partner, maybe it's the fire department, maybe you're able to go over and you do a Facebook live, you know, from the, um, you know, from the state police office or something. And you say, Hey, you know, uh, we're here live at the state police office, uh, talking about, you know, the chief of police favorite book, you know, or, you know, uh, or we're here just talking about some safety tips for Halloween or three things your kids should do before they eat their Halloween candy. Um, and the value of that is a it's not just you it's them which means I then they're going to share it yeah that's great yeah we so did. they're going to share it. so now you're going to get exposure to your community but they're right. obviously going to share it so you're going to community exposure to their community right. also um and so looking for those little opportunities um when i was on the board of the sebago lake region chamber of commerce and what i used to do is i'd go around with my phone and we would when we would get a new member I would go over to the RV shop and we'd do like a 10 or 15 minute Facebook live from their shop. And they'd give us a tour of their office and talk about, you know, you know, what they do and who they are and why they loved Wyndham and all this stuff. Um, and it was just, you know, it was a great way to collaborate and add value to the community, but also, you know, self-serving wise, it's a great way to get more shares because that business owner is going to share it. Probably some of their employees are going to share it. Um, yeah. so it's just another way of, uh, 
of getting community interaction. Um, and with a library, some of the things you might think about is, you know, are there people in the community that maybe we don't do a video about, but maybe we have a photo of, you know, this is Hollis's, you know, oldest resident, or this is the oldest house in Hollis, or, um, you know, this is, this is Frank, he's 98 years old and swims in the Saco River every week, and he loves to read this book, and here's a photo of him. Um, you know, little pieces of information that you might know because you've lived here long enough that you could show these unique cool pieces of content that like, oh, I never even knew that about the, the Saco River or that bridge or Salmon Falls. Like, it's funny, when I moved to Hollis, um, my dad, who's lived in Westbrook for 8 million years, said, oh, yeah, you're moving out there to Salmon Falls. And I'm yeah. like, what are you talking about? Yeah, Salmon Falls Day, right over the bridge. You're not in Hollis, you're in Salmon Falls. And I'm like, dad, I don't know what you're talking about. And then like, when I drove him out to my house, he's like, yeah, Salmon Falls guy right here. He's like, my dentist used to be out here. And so I'm like, what? And so, you know, but like some of the older members of the community may have some awesome stories about what Hollis was like or what, you know, um, the changes that they've seen or. Um, oh, David, I'm so glad you said this because honestly, I was just, I've lived in Hollis forever and I was just reading one of the old, um, I think it was a bicentennial um, thing where they, um, they went around and interviewed some of the couples in the town and told their stories. And you don't realize, like myself personally, I don't realize that now I'm one of the oldest people here because it happened so gradually. I always looked for other people. I wanted to hear their stories. Mm -hmm. So just a couple days ago, someone said to me, you should interview so-and-so. And, and now you're saying this in uh, another idea I had, I would love to get kids' thoughts right now on how has the uh, this virus uh, impacted you? What do you think? Blah, blah, blah. Because 10 or 20 years from now, those are going to be interesting little stories. Definitely. And I didn't know if I should have the kids write them, send them. But the interview thing, oh, my God, I love that idea. Yeah. Yep. And what's great about this is – always look for how can I mac get maximum value from this extra work I'm doing from this video interview. So if you think of a video, so I have a video I can share on Facebook. Well, now I can also share that video on Instagram. I can also upload that video to YouTube. And now I can embed that video onto my website. So three weeks from now, when that post is buried in your Facebook feed, you can remind people of, we went and surveyed 10 children around Hollis, Maine of how they're keeping safe from COVID. Click here to watch it on our YouTube or to watch it on our website. And so if you, and if you send them to your website, then boy, that's gold also. And so lots of times there's content that you can use and cross five or six different things. And we don't even think of it um, because we're thinking just Facebook. And then we were, oh no, I could post this on so many different places to get value um, and reach more people. So I love that idea. I, that's yeah. I love that. So if you do a Facebook Live, the video is available to download to you later. Yes. Yeah, so you'll have the option. Um, there's two. There's two ways you can do it. Um, if you were interviewing children, um, you 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 might find that you want to film it normally on your phone, just because they might not have an answer or they might. Who knows what their older brother might say in the back. Like I remember one time we went into Wyndham Weaponry, we were doing a Facebook Live, and right when we walked in, a guy dropped a gun barrel. I was like, oh, F! And I'm like, oh, my God, we're live in front of 3,600 people right now, and we had to like stop the video, delete it, and like get it off the news feed. Um, and so, uh, you know, be aware of what's going on in the background. Um, but you can – when you're doing a Facebook Live, you'll be presented the option at the end of it to save it to your camera roll on your phone. And so then you'll have a separate copy of that Facebook Live on your phone, or you can download it from Facebook, uh, as long as you're an admin as the person who, who uploaded it. And so, and I can send you instructions on, on how to do it. It's a little involved, but, but there's ways to do it. So okay. Dave, do you think with children, it would be better not to be live, just record it and then save it and download it later? I think, I think that's probably what I would do just because there's so many unknowns right. um, that it, it, Unless it was like a group of children or something. like, I guess I would take it case by case basis. Cause okay. if, you're at a, if you're at a children's home and they have dogs in the background and the mom's using the blender and all this other stuff, um, then it can really diminish the quality of the video. Um, yeah. And so, so I would, I guess I would go 
case by case basis. And if you're ever doing a Facebook Live on your own, one of the ways to manage that background noise that people, lots of people don't know about is just with your earbuds, you can plug your earbuds into your iPhone or smart device, and then it will use the microphone from your earbuds as a direct line in for audio, and then it won't pick up any background. Like you probably hear my Pomeranian right now because the UPS man's here. Um, it's actually dropping off Trump's niece's book. That's funny. Oh, I That's funny. Lucky. I'm like, oh, my wife's going to be happy because the book just arrived. Um, so, uh, so I'm totally distracted because I don't know why he's still just standing there. So apparently he wants to see how much he can make my dog bark. Um, but, uh, and I have another dog, Precious, here who's blind, who sleeps on my office desk. And so now she's trying to see what's going on. Um, okay, there you go. Okay. Um, and so uh, the earbuds in your phone, though, will cut back on all that background noise, and it'll give you really crystal clear audio. And so one of the downsides that I see with some of the other libraries who do the children's book hour is they sound like they're reading like into a toilet. So it's like, oh, one fish, two fish, three fish, blue fish. And like, it's echoing around the room and the audio quality is just, just junk. All they need to do is either use their AirPods to get direct line in or plug in, plug in their ear pods. And what I do is instead of putting the earbuds in, cause I don't need, you know, you're not gonna have anything to listen to. I just take the, the ear pods and I'll tuck them into my shirt. And so that way all I have is just the microphone right here. And also on Amazon, um, depending on what model phone you have, Amazon sells lavalier mics for the iPhone and Android device. So if you're ever interviewing somebody, um, like a child, for instance, then these lav mics, I think they cost like 20 bucks or 15 bucks. You can get them so they plug right into your phone and you can mic the child that you're interviewing. And so lots of children, you know, you know they're scared, they don't emote very well. Um, and so you could put a little lav mic right on their jacket um, so you get really great audio of whatever it is that they're saying. So you don't get all that background noise. It's really great if you're outside, at, maybe you're at Big Daddy's and all these kids are around and you're talking to them. Well, you don't want to hear the traffic zooming by. So if you have the lav mic or your earbuds in, then you won't get all that background noise. Um, it's a little, a little secret that lots of people don't, don't know about. Good. And is that LAV? Are you saying lav? Yeah, uh, let me show you. Yeah, it's, I forget what they're called, but. Um... Okay, lavalier. Yeah. All right. And yep. then you'll see like this lavalier microphone for Android or iPhone. Um, okay. And they range in prices. I think I spent 15 bucks on mine. I think this is the one that I bought from my, I have an iPhone, but, um, but they're great because they usually have a pretty long, the only thing you just, want to look at is how long the cord is because oh, sometimes yeah. the cord is like two feet and so that would be really weird if you're trying to interview someone that your nose is touching during covid and so um uh but you can also buy extensions for that cord so okay. either way this all the issues that could arise are very very easy and cheap to solve so do you know david up for canva to download it to my phone i have an android phone well mm -hmm. is it only for iphones no Android and iPhone. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. And it'll also work on your iPad. So if you like a bigger screen, uh, okay. it works there too. So, but the only other thing I, th I thought I should show you guys, and I'll have to answer any other questions, but have you ever experienced with any of the types of ads that Facebook offers? No. Okay. So one thing you might think about, um, let me switch over to, I got to switch over to a different page so I can show you. So one of the ways that you can really benefit um, while using Facebook for like maximum, maximum benefit is if at some point, um, you know, you find a way to either raise funds or get some money to be able to advertise. And it doesn't have to be a ton of money. Like it could be a $20 a month budget that you break up $5 a week. Um, and so if you, for instance, like, uh, you know, announcing the new book and then you, add, you know, attach an image to it, there's a button here that says boost post. 
the first rule of thumb is never listen to Facebook when they start telling you how to advertise. Their goal is to get your money. Their goal is not to provide strategic advice. And so I tell you that because a friend of mine owns a mechanic shop in Westbrook. Facebook told him, boost this post for $20 and reach 10,000 people. So he paid the 20 bucks and they boosted the post to reach 10,000 people in Bangor, Maine. Oh. People in Bangor, Maine aren't going to drive to Westbrook to get their flat tire fixed. So don't, Facebook will have all these little pop-ups that they act like are helpful. Typically they're meant to get your money. Um, and it's just a robot that's telling you that anyhow, it's not actually a real person at Facebook. And so, um, but once you have a post composed that you know you like with an image or a video, if it's an image that doesn't have too much text, there's this button that always exists here called boost post. <coughs> Boosting a post is the only way to guarantee that you're going to reach a lot more people than you normally would. So if we click boost posts, it's going to present you with all these different options and it'll preview. Actually, I'm going to have to add an image so you can see, see what it's going to actually look like. So you're going to get all these options. It'll say, you know, this thing about special ad category, which you don't have to worry about unless you're a politician. Um, and then it says audience. Audience is who you want to reach, who you want to see this post. Um, you can boost a post so that it reaches more people who already like your page. So it might be a thing for library. Like it's a, hey, we're having a members only happy hour, you know, and so that doesn't apply to people who aren't members of the library. So you might do it that way. You can reach people who like your page and their friends. So that will go out to people who currently like your Facebook page and it will be served to all of their friends too, potentially. People in your local area, which means you could click that and say, I want this to reach, you know, people within a you know, five mile radius of the library, for instance. And so that might be like a big public announcement or something like that. Or you can create your own, which is what I do lots of times because it's just a bit more strategic where you click choose people you choose, click edit. And then you'd say, okay, well, we know that, um, you know, women, you know, of, you know, let's say who are 35 and up who live in, Hollis, Maine. You know, we know that they like romance novels, for instance. So we want to have this post boosted to women of this age group who like romance novels. So we put in their age, put in the town where they live. We can make this bigger if you want to have a huge reach. You can make it very, very small. I say, no, I want to keep it to a 10 mile radius around the library. You can go in and you could target it which means you can wow. put in different qualifications of these people. So for instance, if your target audience is, are, um, say the book you're announcing is about marriage and planning a marriage, then you can say, I want this to reach engaged women. So now Facebook is going to serve this book announcement to women between 35 and 65 who live within 10 miles of Hollis, Maine, who are engaged. And so now you're reaching a super, super specific audience. In fact, Facebook says too specific because there's less right. than a thousand people in all this that are engaged. Right. Um, but you can see how this would be helpful if you changed it instead to say, you know, we want to reach people who read Stephen King. Right. You know, and, you know, we could widen the audience. 13 to six, you know, and so it's telling you about 1300 people within a 10 mile radius who identified an interest with Stephen King. Lots of times though, for a library, um, what you can do is leave it up to Facebook. So you can do some targeting, but Facebook's artificial intelligence now is so smart that it will figure out who is gonna interact with the post. And so you may only say, okay, we know that we want this to reach people who are you know, 18 to 65, who live in Hollis, Maine. And you'll live within a 10 mile radius. And then it tells you, okay, well, you can potentially reach, you know, 2000 people. So we click save. And then we scroll down and here's where you'll set your budget. 
And so it's going to tell you how many people you can potentially reach based off of how much money you spend. There's two determining factors, which is the duration of the campaign, meaning how long you want to boost it, and then what your total budget is. So you could say, I want to, you know, we have $5 to spend on this book announcement. So we just drag it over to five bucks. And it's going to say, okay, well, you're going to reach between 800, 180 and 510 people per day of the 1,800 people who we know are fans of Stephen King who live in Hollis, Maine. And so you could increase it and it'll tell you the more you increase it, the more people you're going to reach and you can increase how long you want it to run. So maybe, you know, you have a $5 budget and you want to spread it out over two days, then great. It's going to reach, you know, a smaller amount of people per day, but it's going to be in their news feeds potentially for a longer period. Um, or you can say, no, this is a week-long promotion where we're announcing new hours and we want everybody to know. And we have, you know, a $50 budget, then all of a sudden you know, all the numbers go up. And then all you do is you just click set budget. And then once you do that, it will start that ad once it's approved and it will force that post into people's feeds that you have targeted so that you're not reliant upon the diminishing organic reach of a Facebook post. Um, and so it's, it's does, great. Uh, does oh, Facebook ahead. mark those as ads? What's that? Does Facebook mark those as advertisements? Yes. Yeah. So they'll appear in, uh, I'm sure there'll be one right in my news feed. Let's see here. So anything that says sponsored means that's an ad from someone. Um, if it's, yeah, if it's political, then it will actually tell you who's running it. I run ad campaigns for all kinds of different uh, celebrity and, and politicians and news people. Um, so it would actually tell you who's paying for it. Um, but if it says sponsored, then that means that it's an ad and people would know um, you know, that, it, that it's an ad from you. Um, but most people don't even know what that means when they see it you know, coming yep. through the feed. But it's a great way to kind of reach more people than you would be able than just by relying on face on your organic reach. The other yeah. nice part about it is that <clears throat> since Facebook owns Instagram, it'll automatically also serve that ad on Instagram. So oh, it'll I was gonna ask that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll automatically do that. Uh, so you reach people on both both social networks. So um, one question, I know you said it's better to share from Facebook to Instagram because of the pixels and all that. And so, uh, but on these that are, um, that you pay the ad, you don't have to um, actually do that because Facebook will do it. Is that what you're saying? If you pay. Exactly. Yep. But, the thing, but I guess the thing we have to change though is, um, or do we, do we have to change um, the administrator for a Facebook ad is, Heidi and Caroline. Um, Heidi and I started Instagram, but Heidi's um, doesn't do much of it right now, so I do. Um, but so going that way from Facebook to Instagram, I don't know who owns it. I mean, we just created. Uh, yeah, we well, I know that I actually did try to set up the Facebook to Instagram integration that David uh, showed us uh, earlier, and right. I wasn't able to set it up because I'm not an admin on the Instagram account. So okay. we can figure that out, but I'm pretty sure that um, we'll need admins on both sides. Um, you know, the same people have to be admins in both sides. Right. Okay, so I should be on the Facebook one too and, and have I those. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. The only part where it gets kind of confusing is the billing side of it. Um, okay. Because, hmm. so without getting making things way overwhelming, um, so Facebook whoever is setting up the ad, okay. um, it, Facebook will charge that person's payment method um, unless you have set up what's called Facebook Business Manager. Um, Facebook Business Manager is free. It's business.facebook.com. And it's very, very involved. And so I, I won't go too deep into it, um, but it allows you an area where, um, you can set it up so multiple people can create ads for your business, but it only bills one payment method. And so um, I can send you, it's very, very involved. It's almost easier that if you're not, if you're only going to be running for ads for Facebook for just the library, it's almost easier yeah. for everybody just to have that card number than it is to deal with Facebook business manager. Um, but I could send you instructions on how to set this up. It gives you access to, um, ad accounts so you can 
um, you could have, you know, five or six different people creating ads and it would always build the same, the same credit card, no matter who they're logged in as. Um, okay. But it does get very, it's a, it's a pretty steep learning curve um, to get used to using it. And so I'm, you know, just kind okay. of caution, caution you on it. <laughs> it's, uh, okay. Uh, but uh, the only other thing I would mention that I think is like super useful and also free um, is Facebook has what's called the Facebook pixel. It's totally free. It'll take about 10 minutes to install on your website. If you Google install Facebook pixel, they'll give you instructions. Um, I can send you a link to it too. Um, but the Facebook pixel, what's cool about it is it tracks traffic to your website and it keeps track of who's visiting your website for six months. And then in the future, if you ever want to get really advanced with your advertising, it'll allow you to retarget people who have been on your website and read specific pages on your website. So for instance, if you've ever been on Amazon and typed in Dyson, and then you hop on Facebook and you're getting all these ads for Dyson, that's because right. you activated their pixel. And you oh. can do the same thing on your library page. And so for instance, if you had a, you know, a library page on here and it's about, um, you know, the read aloud, you know, and you know, people are coming here. Well, with the Facebook pixel, you could retarget everybody who visits this page in the future with another big announcement about read alouds. And so um, it's really a valuable tool um, as you get more and more advanced, you know, with your advertising. I encourage people to install it on their site um, even if they have no intentions on using it anytime in the near future, because even if you don't use that pixel till next year, because they come up with a way that's a lot easier to use it than it is right now, um, it'll still be tracking all the traffic. So for the little amount of time it takes to add that code to the back end of the site, you'll be tracking traffic for the rest of the existence of the website, which gives you all that ability to reach more people, more targeted people, uh, the Facebook pixel also allows you to create what's called lookalike audiences, which is really cool. Where basically what it does is it says, okay, we know these 10,000 people visited your website. We're going to create a lookalike audience, which means they're going to say all these 10,000 people have all these things in common. We're going to create another audience of another 10,000 people who haven't been to your website, but look just like all those other people. And then you can run ads to those people. And so you can also upload an email list to it. And then you can say, I want to target everybody who gets my Hollis Center Public Library emails. I want them to get my Facebook ads and it'll match up their emails with their Facebook account. And then you can serve them ads to them. And so it's really pretty amazing. Um, I have clients who are churches who use it in the fashion of they have a page on their website about marriage counseling. And so they'll drive traffic to the marriage counseling page. And then we'll retarget those people whenever they have a new blog about, you know, how a husband can be a good husband and how, it, you know, what makes a good dad. And, oh, we have a marriage workshop coming up because they already know these people have self-identified as interested in marriage. These are great people to be serving strategic content to. Um, and it's totally free to add to your website. It just takes a few minutes. Um, and eat, like I said, right now it's kind of confusing to use. Um, but they always are updating, making things easier. So even if you don't use it for a year, you'll still have all that data and, and nice. data is the name of the game in today's world. So. Oh, this has been wonderful, David. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm glad I, I'm glad it could be helpful. I recorded this. I'll try to figure out how I can get it off of here and then send it to you guys too, in case you need to look at anything uh, again. So. Just one question I had from a bit ago. Um, you showed us earlier um, uh, the Canva for creating a um, image with text and all that fun stuff. Um, when posting that, would it be, um, should we also put some real text in the post? Like, you know, text with image? Yes, definitely. Yep. So within the stat, and so, and lots of times I use that to my benefit um, where I can put minimal text in the image and then everything I want to say, I'll put in the status. And so it's like, instead of saying um, outdoor, you know, socially distanced picnic party at the Hollis Library from, you know, 11 to 1, you know, bring your own hot dogs and packing all that in an image. In the image, I'll just say picnic. And then in the status, I'll give all the details. So that way I'm not offending the um, image regulations that Facebook has. Okay, cool. Oh, good. I'm glad you said that because I had that question before and that's good. Okay. 
Cool. Well, I will send you guys uh, some of the articles I mentioned too about Facebook Live and all that too, so you uh, can check it out. If you have more questions, feel free to email me. I'm I'm always happy to help. And so um, I just figured I was like, I, yeah, I was like, man, there must be tons of local businesses that are you know hurting right now that everybody's trying to figure out how to become relevant, you know, with right. in today's world. And so so I'm glad you guys took me up. You're the only ones who did. I couldn't believe. No. I, was like, I was like, do you know how much people pay me per hour to train them to use Facebook, but, and but nobody he, took me up um, on it. So, <laughs> You know what's really odd, Dave? My um, granddaughter just happened to stop by that night, and I think she had reached out to you for um, NBI group or something. Oh, yes, and, yep. And so she told me your name, and she was telling me what you were doing, and I was so excited. And I went on Hollis Community Page, but, oh, that I don't know how to go on Hollis Community Page and look for a specific person. So I couldn't. You know oh, okay, I mean? yeah. yeah, I can show you how to do that real quick if you want. Oh, because I couldn't find you. So uh, it, my granddaughter had texted me your information or something. So. Yep. So if you ever need to find somebody again in any okay. group, it's All right, right yeah. here where it says search this group. Oh, and this okay. will allow you to search. This is also super helpful. Um, like I, I belong to some like social media strategy groups where we're talking okay. about specific topics, but there might be a hundred posts that day. But if yeah. I know a specific word, it'll allow you to search by content within the post or a person's name. Oh, great. Good. So you can put in like my wife's name, Aaron. Okay. And then it'll show you, here's Aaron. You know, here's all the Aaron's in the group. And then it will start showing you Aaron's posts about our eggs for sale. Um, and then it'll show you, you know, anybody mentioning Aaron or when my wife, if my wife is trolling somebody or whatever she's doing, um, then it'll, uh, it'll show you all the different, whatever oh, nice. that keyword is you type. So. Okay, good. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yep. All right. Cool. Well, I'll get yeah. you guys all this information. Like I said, if you have follow-up questions, I'm always, I'm always happy to help. And um, when the world's back to normal, if it's ever helpful for me to do something at the library for the community, I'm happy to, I used to do that at the Wyndham library where I do like a free course or something for people. Um, I'm happy to, to help however I can. So. so we could promote you on our page too. So more people find you. Yeah. Yeah. Feel free. Definitely. Okay. My website is socialimpressions.net. Okay. So. Yep. All right. Good. Cool. I know. I can't believe people didn't reach out to you because this is such a great, great thing you did. Well, I, I figure. I think it's because usually when people offer something for free, there's some huge sales pitch at the end. So I'm like, probably people think like, I'll talk with you for free, and then I'm going to try to sell you. But it's like most of my clients are national or international. Um, and so it's like, I have nothing to sell a smaller local business typically just because of the nature of, of my type of business. Um, and so I was kind of surprised because it's like, you know, there's all kinds of businesses and I hear all kinds of people talking about going out of business and everybody, you know, and I'm like, Oh, I'll do this. And maybe uh, it'll help some people out. So I'm glad you guys took me up on it. So. We well, yeah, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. All right. Well, it was great to meet you all. Great to meet you. Thank you. Stop in at the library. Oh, I will. For, and now that I know you're open, I definitely will. So. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.